Hi, in this video I'll show you how to recover your previous hybrid battery in case one or more cells got bad. There's a lot of information about this on the internet, but uh, pieces are kind of in there and I just want to make a comprehensive video that would cover every single step that you need to take. Plus, many people just throw in the new cell in, in the battery block and they don't check the capacity of the remaining blocks or they don't really rebalance the battery, so I'd like to do it in a proper way. As you see, I got the red triangle plus the, the warning sign and the car essentially is not using battery at all and uh, just uh, using the engine power. Another sign is uh, the battery starts discharging and charging back really quickly uh, so it kind of doesn't hold the charge. Also, the blower fan and the battery block start running like it basically runs all the time now and uh, it never did that before. I got one of these obd2 bluetooth adapters and also got this uh, torque app for android i did scan the code so this is my catalyst converter and uh, these three codes are related to battery failure p0a80 is like a general code and then p3019 and p3020 these two basically mean that block number nine and block number ten failing i also have the stat screen and now you can see it so block number nine is almost 1.4 volts lower than than the others and uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't be in the range of probably 0 0.1 so yeah you can definitely tell this one is failing and for the block number 10 I, I haven't noticed a lot of deviation so I don't know I'll have to test it now I'm gonna show you how to get the battery out so you need to uh, Take this metal out of its container. This is super important, you have to take out this safety plug. You need to push up, then turn it, and then pull it out. Taking this panel out. Okay, so, in order to disconnect this panel, you have to undo this guy first. <laughs> Side. So we need to take care of that guy.
12 millimeter. So the right one is a little bit longer. Okay, so now I'm gonna open the battery so I, I could get access to the to the battery blocks. There's a couple of things to mention. First of all, make sure that you disconnected the the orange plug from here. This is the most important part. Otherwise, you're exposing yourself to the risk of uh, getting a electrical shock of 220 volts DC. Plus, I would recommend that you wear special uh, protective gloves. So in order to get this. Uh, cover uh, off. You need to undo this to nuts, 10 millimeter, and uh, there's a couple more on the other side, so I'm gonna do that now. Now there's also this guy on the side, and there's two more on this side, and there's one on the other side. Be careful because the edges are pretty uh, sharp. Okay, so now make sure you're wearing your rubber protection gloves. I'm gonna remove these black covers. Underneath there are like metal plates that connecting the cells together so they form one big battery. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver. There's like a clip in the middle. Okay, so now there are 10 millimeter nuts on every every cell. I'm gonna disconnect this guy first. He's eight millimeters. Carefully remove this guy. They corroded pretty badly, and I I'll probably have to clean them somehow. Okay, this is the other side, the the plus. So when you're disconnecting the red plug, uh, it's uh, it's breaking the connection here. So your battery is kind of divided on two sides. At this point, it's it's pretty safe to uh, to not use any uh, gloves because you already uh, disconnected the models from each other. So as you can see, uh, this side is also pretty corroded. Okay, so I, I got uh, 28 modules here and 14 blocks. The counting starts from the right side, not from the side of ECU, but from the from the opposite side. So this is gonna be the module one, two, three, four, five, 
and the block is two modules so this is block number one number two number three number four and so on then switching sides all the time plus minus plus minus so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna maintain an excel table of voltages for every module so i could keep track of things so i'll start from module number one so it's 818 next one is 821 and so on so the error was i was getting was about block number nine so block number nine is these two modules i'm gonna measure the voltage on them now so this one is 824 which is similar to to the rest of the modules this one is 692 so as you can see it's like more than a volt less this module is definitely bad now you need to determine which modules are weak and need to be replaced together with a failed one. There are three tests that can help you with that. During initial voltage test, you need to measure which modules show in smaller voltage compared to the rest of the pack. The second test is internal resistance test. On this stage you will apply load on every module and determine which modules discharge quicker than others. The third test is capacity test. During capacity test you will find out capacity of each module while restoring it. The capacity on your battery equals the lowest capacity among all modules. And capacity of one module is the lowest capacity of individual cells in the module. So you will need to make sure that capacities are on the same level among the modules in the battery. Modules with lower capacity among the pack will need to be replaced. It's better to do the load test first as your modules are of equal voltage right off the car. And you will see which ones are dropping voltage quicker compared to others. Now we're going to do the resistance test on every module. In my case I was trying to restore the capacity first, but uh, maybe it's a good idea to actually do the resistance test first, just to figure out which modules have lower resistance. I'm kind of standing out, being the weakest, swap them up, and then try to recover the capacity. So it's suggest to use a headlight bulb for this. I got this H4 bulb, high beam and low beam, and I connect it to the bottom and the left terminals which is going to make it to use low beam and high beam at the same time yeah the idea is that you connect this bulb to the module terminals you measure the voltage after a minute uh, the weak modules will be far below so if the capacity is pretty good the internal resistance can be pretty bad so i'm going to use stop watch on my phone and just connect it for a minute so i started at 776 So the voltage is dropping a bit, but this, this model looks to be holding back pretty well. Seven sixty one. Okay, now on module number two. This is the start voltage seven seven seven. Seven fifty eight and it came back up to about 765. So you probably already know that the best way to service your previous battery is to do a balanced charge of every module. What that means is you have to deeply discharge and deeply charge every module three to five times. Uh, what it's gonna do is restore the capacity of the module. I'm gonna show you the true capacity so you're gonna know if this uh, module is bad or needs to be replaced or it's still good to go. So if you overcharge the module, the cells that are fully charged will not accept any more charge and the cells that are not fully charged they will come up to the same level. That would actually show you the real capacity of the module, which is going to be the capacity of the weakest cell. That's why it's recommended to do three to five cycles of discharge and charge. It's a good idea to basically keep track of the capacity of each module, and then it's better to replace the weakest one so that your whole block is uh, of the matched capacity. Okay, so this is my balance rig. I got the uh, Hobby King multi-charger you can do like four batteries at the same time I also had this uh, echo cell six so I can do six batteries at a time also just got the power supply I bought it off eBay for 50 bucks you can give up to 47 amps which is pretty good for hobby game charger it's recommended to use five amps uh, charging rate I just quickly gonna go through the settings so for the program it's nickel MH battery as i said i'm gonna put it to five discharge rate is maximum one amp so i'm gonna uh, try to discharge to six 
volts. Some people say it's better to do it more gently to 6.3. I'm gonna see uh, how the battery is gonna react to this and uh, go from there. So the cycle is discharge and charge three times. Waste time five minutes. I guess that's the time between the charge and discharge. What else? There's additional settings here. Sensitivity, I don't know, I, I'll leave this at default. Waste time, five minutes. I guess that's the time between the charge and discharge. Uh, default is one minute, I put it to five. Safety timer, I put it to seven, 20 minutes. I guess it's a lot, but since I'm charging at three amps rate, maybe 720 is a better setting here. Otherwise 400 should be enough, I guess. So this one, everyone puts a, like a different setting here. People say 7,250 is, is enough. I'm just gonna start with the 7,500 and I'll see from there. Anything over 6,500, it's a, it's a really good battery. So it's up to you what you're gonna set there. Beep and buzzer, whatever you wanna set here. Uh, input power low, cut off 10 volts. I guess all good as this. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna start this one. So I'm gonna use the same settings on other four batteries and we'll see from there. Also I haven't mentioned that but there's a way to switch from manual to automatic. If you press start and this one together. I'm charging odd numbers here so one, three, five, seven, nine. Uh, I'm doing this because basically it's gonna distribute the heat a little better. If I was charging all five batteries stacked together it's gonna be probably more aggressive heat distribution so I think I'm gonna do one three five seven nine and then I'm gonna do two four six eight also you have to keep the modules uh, in the block when you cycle them because when you charge them and you put seven thousand five hundred as a cutoff uh, they might get swollen so like this one if you can see the distances here and say here so this one get, got swollen a bit and uh, if it was out of the block it, it would have get damaged probably but now it's just gonna cool down and it's gonna be fine i'm using this fan floor fan to go on to the chargers and the battery so i guess that's gonna help the overheating a little bit well i got first results here the first two batteries that i charged you can see how capacity was improving over time so this was discharge and charge so this one was 3098 and then it improved to 4279 and then it was 4,484. I'm gonna keep balancing them and making notes and we'll see where we get to. So what you can see here is the result measurement table for my modules. I have 28 rows here. In the first column I have the result for the initial voltage test and they're pretty much on the same level uh, but uh, module 18 is shown 694. And then the rest of this table was the capacity test. This was the first discharge. This was the first charge, second discharge, second charge, third discharge, third charge. It's more important the, uh, what you're getting during the discharge. This is uh, close to the actual capacity of the module. The charge results, is not, they are not really uh, relevant. So as you can see here, uh, the initial capacity was pretty low for a lot of modules. Say this one was uh, 1465 when it's supposed to be 7500 from the factory. And then you can see that uh, with every cycle it was improving. So basically that's how you restore it. So for this one it was 2621 and then on the third discharge it was 2900. So by the third discharge for some modules I got to the level of over 500 and some of them were below. I marked the good ones with green color and the rest were marked with the yellow color. And then I, I tried to do some more uh, cycles for this other modules and some of them I uh, was able to restore uh, back to 5000. So as you can see here for some of them I did as many as seven cycles. For instance the number 10 I started with 2400 and then ended up restoring it to 4400. But some of the modules they just wouldn't restore uh, like this one number 16 went only up to 3700. This was my final column. As, as you can see the modules I decided to keep they are in a green color and uh, the ones I decided to replace I put a cross. So I decided to replace number 5, number 15, number 16, uh, 18 was bad from beginning and uh, number 27. 
I also did a couple cycles for the replacement modules that I received. They all showed pretty good capacities, over 6000. And then, and here I had results for internal resistance test. It appeared that most of the modules uh, were pretty strong and, or on the same level and only module number 15 showed as much as 3% decrease rate and the others were below 2. I decided to only replace uh, module number 15 as the result of this test. So here I have a few columns, voltage before test, voltage under load in, in beginning, voltage under load after a minute, and voltage after the module was resting. And here I just did uh, simple calculations uh, to measure the difference in, in percentage. So based on these results I decided to replace six modules. I marked the modules I want to replace, which is number 5. 14, 15, 16, 18, and 27. As you can see, most of them are in the middle of the pack, which is uh, usually the case because the middle of the pack is uh, overheating. So number 15 is the only module that uh, failed the load test. All others have uh, low capacity. Plus, all others have a capacity lower than uh, 5000 milliamp. Number 15 also had the lowest voltage after sitting for a few days. So yeah, definitely a bad one. I got six replacement modules, two of them I bought off eBay, the other four I got from Eric on Pre's chat. So I'm gonna install them into these positions. I'm also going to rotate the modules, so 1 to 14 will go this side and, and then 15 to 28 will go this side. So basically, it's usually a good idea to put the modules that were on the sides in the middle, because uh, these modules in the center are more exposed to heat and going through more stress. Now there are four bolts that holding this side plate, plus there are two small nuts. This is 12 millimeter. Screw all the bolts on this side and the other side. Now I'm gonna turn it again. Detach the rubber thing. So number 14, I think number 8, has this uh, sensors attached. And the last one has this sensor connected to it too.
Okay, I have a problem with 28. I'm actually gonna put it in the end of the pack. Because it's not very straight. I'm going to install the plate. You know, you're gonna have to align somehow. I installed the modules as I said 1 to 14, 15 to 28. What I'm doing now is I'm cycling four of the new modules just to see the capacity. I already did the light bulb test on them. I want to clean the copper plates. As you can see, they are really corroded, like they pretty much green color. I'm gonna get them out. So to clean the plates, it's just to use some vinegar, some salt, and some uh, baking soda. Just gonna put some vinegar in a bowl. See they're, they're pretty clean now. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean them with the baking soda. Just gonna flush them. That's the result, they're, they're pretty nice and clean. The battery pack is ready to be reassembled. But there is one last step. The voltages on the modules have to be as close as possible. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find the module with the lowest voltage and I'm gonna discharge all others to the same level. There's a different, better approach to this. Uh, you can connect all the blocks in parallel and let it even out. For this you need to connect all the pluses of all blocks together and 
all the minuses of all the blocks together and uh, this will make it a one big battery it will even itself out in about a day so the minimum is 774 I'm gonna discharge all other blocks to, to this voltage maybe I will target 770 because the one with the 774 will drop some voltage too while I'm discharging others I'll be using the bulb to discharge manually I'm gonna be checking the voltage periodically by uh, detaching it and just want to make sure it's gonna stop at 774 or so I just do charge it to 768 and then it goes back to 774 or so so it appeared I actually ha had to discharge uh, some of the modules a few times to get a target voltage. I ended up having an average around 780. This one module that was 774 actually charged it to 780. Now they all 778 to 781. Now I'm gonna assemble the block. After cleaning the bars, what you can do is you can apply anti-corrosion uh, compound. On previous chart I will suggest to use Nolux. Uh, you can get it at Home Depot. Other people use dielectric grease, but the problem is if you apply it to the bars, basically it's gonna add additional resistance. And this stuff is just protecting, it, it's actually supposed to be applied on contacts and it's gonna protect from corrosion. So I'm gonna apply a thing called both sides. Again, it's not a dielectric, so it shouldn't add any resistance. You can also do is apply a bit of it on thread. So I'm gonna do this to the rest of the plates and the rest of the treads. Torque is 48 inch pounds, so this is very important that you use torque wrench. Reinstall the protective covers. Ready to go. Reassemble anything, I just want to connect the battery and check if uh, the car gonna start working fine. I'm gonna connect everything here. safety 
plug. Oh yeah, it started. Caution, icy conditions. So the difference is just a uh, 0.2. So far looks good, I guess. I'm gonna reassemble everything.
do the other side as well. So the car is assembled. <laughs> 